All right, welcome back. Who's bored? We're gonna do some exhaust on a Chevy Traverse all-wheel drive 3.6. Uh, let's do it, baby. We're saving the customer tons of money, so let me show you what's up. Flex pipes rusted out and leaking. Somebody was in here on this decayed flange, put some bolts in it. This is just not a good repair. The flange back here is in bad shape also. Common failure area, common failure area, common failure area. Uh, there's got some other issues that we're not addressing today, but she's got some issues. Let me find a spot for you to watch me work. So if you're at work, you're in the shop, getting your swerve on, good for you. Using them Harbor Freight tools. Uh, this is the Sawzall that I prefer, and, and these things last about a year here. Uh, my Miller uh, over there, 180T, that's my preferred weapon for welding and it was acting up yesterday so i don't know if it's getting ready to run out of argon or not we're going to see how it welds today that's just how things are um so we're going to cut this out we're going to cut this out we're not going to cut through the ac lines um and to do this job at other shops you're you're talking buying a whole front pipe assembly here so this isn't leaking yet so we're going to leave it alone um and then we're going to service this section pretty much other than that it is what it is. You're probably talking $1,500 to do this at a regular repair shop versus a guy that's an exhaust specialist. So let's let's work. Uh, and maybe I won't scream and cry today, but let's let's get you propped up. Make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So let's cut this apart. So I cut away from the AC lines. Not putting flanges back on it. Although I could, but if I want to put flanges back on this exhaust system, you might as well put direct fit parts on. Swinging razor blades. So my welder is usually set up for welding old and new material. Like I said yesterday it was being a pain while I was working. And I don't know if it's just because of the air blowing in the shop from the outside. I'm not sure. Uh, so that's all set up. Ready for me to go new steel hanger. I'm going to get my raw material. So you're watching me do this, not staged, like right from the rip. So let's do this. So the front pipe here is two and a half. So what I'm gonna do is move this back. It will give me area to work. So we'll go inside of here. Um, and I'll show you how to do that, ready? And I'll grab my catalytic converter on my way back. So this catalytic converter here is non-monitored, so you can put this 
right back here, and what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate additional welding that's unnecessary. So it's nice and high. I'm going to get this in place. I'm going to go give this a little bump ski. This I'm going to bump up and then size the two and a half. Remember, this isn't staged like most videos out there. This is this is this is right from go, right? Customer approved the job, get it done. So then we're gonna go flex pipe, boom, and then a piece piece of straight pipe two and a half. Let me show you how we do that. this in place. One welder right to the next, y'all. That looks good. You hear the difference? The argon was in. So that's what was happening yesterday. Make sure you weld those O2 sensor bungs. And then I'm going to measure with my arm so I get the pipe that I need. Is that when I go to grab the welder, that's either the last bit of wire or the last bit of argon. Yep. <laughs> so we shape this just a little bit. Let's see if this fits in here. These universal cats. 
uh, aren't exactly two and a half, even though they say they're two and a half, which pisses me off. So now I have to go in here and massage this. I hope you're still there. So we're gonna shape this again. And what I'm doing is preventing me from wasting, taking another step in doing this job. So by shrinking, we're shaping that end with this cone. I, I have enough material inside of this to weld, or I could butt weld it. I wanna make sure my hangers are all straight in the exhaust job here. So everybody's looking good. Uh, so let me show you how we do this. And then make sure you dial that regulator back. Harbor Freight welding masks, the cheapest crap you can buy. I love welding them and I buy a warranty because I kick the crap out of this stuff. We get new helmets every couple months. <laughs> Like, we rotate our helmets at least once a year. Yeah, or, or more sometimes. Depends on how busy we are. So, we're going to tack this. And then we're going to tack this. And then we're going to take this, who was welding with this last. It should be close enough for me to weld. So, we're going to... My kit needs to be clean, but I don't have time for all that. Like, just check it. Same thing over here. Some guys like to weld off the car. I do it when it's necessary, and it's not the rule for me. So I'm just going to rotate the part. I could run hotter and faster. So I think this is okay. There's 50% more speed in the next wire feed and voltage. We had a mechanic here. I don't even call him mechanic. Let's let's pump it up. We'll call him just somebody. He would well. A. <laughs> no, technician B minus. That I would give him two welds to do, and it'd be 40 minutes, and he'd be on B. And I'm like, what are you doing? Screw it up, dude. I was taking that off. Huh? On, on D. I was taking that off. So That's now right. I just pumped it up. You see how it's plumbing now and fast? That's the way I prefer to do shit because we're a production shop. shop. Not looking for beauty here, I'm looking for functionality. So the risk of running this hot are drips, burning holes if you don't know how to weld. As for me, it's not a problem. Caleb pre-lubricated these pipes for me. So you see it dripping, right? That's you don't really want it to drip. Get this. So now everybody's welded all the way around. I don't have to chase the tops. I'm the, I'll, I'll finish it with this. So weld it all the way around. I don't have to worry about chasing leaks or anything like that. 
Um, and then now this is the tougher part, but I've been doing this a long time, so I'm not really overly concerned with it. So what I'm gonna do is this section here, I start at one o'clock, come back counterclockwise, and she's hot. See how this material like this material here doesn't like, doesn't like all the heat. So for welding this all the way, I'm gonna dial it back because she does not like the heat. And then you have contamination in the, the tip and slag, so I'm going to just scrape it out. I didn't clean this tip to begin. It definitely does help with the argon flow if your tip is clean. Let's dial it back a smidge because I don't want to be melting this crappy converter. adjusting these but eventually one day we'll be sitting around board and then we're going to custom bend or torch nozzles because it does help you get into super tight spots and awkward positions that you can't reach with other torches and then you say oh we'll buy the flexible one after about 50 times that you've bent it around and break so they're junk you're the hobby guy and you weld one for the blue moon. The flexible torch snake ones are perfect. If you're a pro, they're a no go. So that's welded in, that's welded in. Uh, we're going to finish weld this, finish weld this, and then we're going to leak check our work. And by going one o'clock and then clockwise here. Yeah. I know that I have what I need to weld the other side without really seeing. And then this, this cheap cat material does not like the heat. It does not. You're tapping it, it's just me. Stainless, I don't even know what this mixed composition of metal is. That's what I'm going to call it, the mixed Chinese metal. Chinesium. Chinesium. Now, outside, starting at 11. And then going outside. Ah. That's it. 
So now we're going to get our welder out from underneath the rack. I don't suspect I'm going to have any leaks, but you never know. How long has that video been? 20 minutes. So from scratch, from having a job set up on the lift, cutting it apart. I probably could have did this in 15 minutes if I staged it and didn't have to switch welders. Um, but let's cut this hanger off. And I'm getting old too, right, Caleb? I'm slowing down. Did you watch Mike Tyson's thing? He said, I'm coming to the fight with bad intentions. <laughs> well, the second Jake mentioned his daughter, Mike said, I'm scared of what I'm going to do with that right Mike is coming with bad intentions. He hasn't said that since he's knocked them all their effers out in like 10 seconds. So, And he said... He's in just as good a shape as he was when he was younger. So, and he doesn't feel old, he feels strong. That's a confident brother right there. Let's start this thing up. Take a ride on my clunky lift. So, got, what do you guys think about this uh, Chevy Traverse flex piping cat job? Start to finish, no staging. I hope you enjoyed it. Get trying to get to see what we do here. Now, how long would it take? Somebody who doesn't do this every day? Not really sure. I could tell you, if I didn't have to mess with the welder, I probably could have did it in 15 minutes. And then run back and forth if it wasn't staged. Right, so now you start it up. The customer came in loud, they go out quiet. Problem with this, it's a 150,000 mile traverse. The customer hears something they didn't hear over the exhaust, right? The exhaust was covering other noises, they could blame me for other things that's wrong with other things that are wrong with our cars why I try and document so much. So that's the old stuff. Ten years, 150,000 miles, and your exhaust system's near the end of its useful life. In, in, in its entirety. Still an affordable repair option versus replacing the entire exhaust system. And I haven't seen a center muffler and rear section of these go bad yet. Manifold converters constantly from people not taking care of them. Flex pipes failing constantly. The customer's not aware that the front motor mounts bad and trans mounts bad. Um, this is what it is. This is the most affordable solution for this vehicle. And I'll show you how I check the vehicle. I'll check it with my hands. And if I question my work, I'll check it with a vacuum hose. There's nothing to say now. So if I don't feel nothing, I don't feel anything, so I'm done. If I don't feel anything, I'm done. Thanks for hanging out with me. Go back to work.